every morning is the same. Feed the horses, release the chickens, and feed them. Make sure everyone has enough water and that everyone is healthy. There's something to be said about routine. While some may think repetition is boring, many of us find security in knowing what to expect from day to day. That doesn't mean that I don't enjoy a happy surprise, such as a warm day in February or a phone call from my grandchild. But there is comfort in the same old, same old. There is a saying in Missouri, if you don't like the weather, just wait a few minutes, it will change. This week started out with unseasonably warm weather. Today was sunny and the temperature got up to 67 degrees Fahrenheit. This kind of weather can make you want to plant something into the garden. Even though you know this is fall spring and anything you might put into the ground will die when winter comes back with a vengeance. So, no planting in the ground for me today. But that doesn't mean I can't get some seeds into the soil to sprout inside. Most of my garden won't go into the ground until after Mother's Day, but I can start my cool season seeds such as lettuce, celery, and brassicas. At least I get to play in the dirt. After these seeds are planted, they will go into the house to live under the grow lights until late March or early April when they will be transplanted outside. For supper tonight, I'm fixing one of the farmer's favorite meals, chicken chunks. We've been raising our own meat birds for three years now, and this bird will provide enough meat for at least two dishes and some chicken stock. The breast will be cut into chunks to be breaded and fried. The legs, thighs, and wings will be made into something, probably chicken and rice casserole or salsa chicken in the next day or so. And the rest of the chicken will be made into chicken stock to be canned for future use. The farmer and I really like these chicken chunks. It's another lovely, if unusual, February day. It got up to 54 degrees Fahrenheit and I decided to clean up the greenhouse and get it ready for the tomatoes and peppers I will be starting soon. While they germinate and begin to grow in the house under grow lights, once the greenhouse stays reasonably warm overnight, the tomatoes will be up-potted. Then when it's warm enough, they will be transplanted to their home outside. I will wait to transplant the peppers until the nights are at least 55 degrees Fahrenheit, or better, 60 degrees. But tomatoes will tolerate 50 degrees Fahrenheit at night. During the spring, this greenhouse will begin to look like a jungle as I cover all the tables with plants. I love being in the greenhouse when it gets lush with promises of future food. The farmer moves some horse hay closer to the horses for me to make it easier to feed. We bale Bermuda hay in round bales and the farmer usually puts out a whole bale in the feeder about once every three weeks. Because of their shape, round bales shed rain and can be left outside safely. However, we've been through two summers of drought and only got a few bales of hay this past year, so we had to purchase hay from out of state to feed the horses over the winter. We found some brome hay in Kansas and had it shipped in. We were very happy to find this hay, but it was baled in large squares and does not shed water. And we don't have a hay barn to keep it in, so we stack it high and cover it with a tarp to keep it dry. One of these bales will last about a week, but we have to feed a few flakes daily or at least every two days because if it gets wet, it will get ruined. So the single bale is covered by another tarp to keep it dry throughout the week. We've been getting a few rains off and on this winter, but we'll really need rain in the spring and summer in order to get a good cutting of hay. We've already had to sell off most of our cattle because of the two-year drought. Hopefully we'll be able to produce hay this year for the animals we still have. After two lovely days of fall spring, we woke up to snow today. It is February and this is the weather we're supposed to have, but I was really enjoying temperatures in the 50s and 60s. I even got to hang out clothes the other day, which I dearly enjoy doing. I am thankful for my dryer, but I really enjoy clothes that have been dried outside. I don't expect I will be doing much outside today. I hate being cold. But that's okay because I have lots of housework to get done and the weather forces me to stay inside and get it done. I also need to deal with the rest of the chicken and I've decided to make salsa chicken. 
You can make this in the crock pot with boneless, skinless chicken breasts. But since the breast was made into chicken chunks, which was delicious, I'm going to pressure cook the wings and leg quarters to get the meat off of the bone more easily. I really don't like deboning legs, thighs, and wings that are nearly impossible to do raw. After the chicken is cooked and the bones and skin are removed, I mix the meat, salsa, vegetables, and soup into the pot with some taco seasoning and then some rice. Then I simmered this until all the flavors come together for a delicious stew that is perfect for a snowy day. Even though we woke up to snow yesterday, the temperature was 33 degrees Fahrenheit. Today it's 16 degrees Fahrenheit. Extreme temperatures are the downside of homesteading. When it gets down into the teens, the water for the animals will freeze. Water is kind of important and we must break ice so they can get a drink. This ice is only about a quarter of an inch thick and the horses can push their noses through it. And we also have a water trough inside the horse hut that doesn't freeze as quickly so they haven't had to go without. I can't imagine living in the north where below zero temps can run for a month or longer at a time. Plus those who live in the north and have to take care of animals. So what do you do when it's 16 degrees Fahrenheit out? You cook. The farmer set up a pot of chili for our supper, which will really hit the spot in this weather. We had a lot of chicken parts in the freezer accumulating until there was enough to start a couple of pots of stock to get canned for future soups. In addition to the chicken, I added onions, including the skins, which will give the stock a beautiful color and extra nutrients. I also added some freeze-dried celery I made a few weeks back when I bought a stock of celery on sale. I should have bought more than one stock because I used nearly all I had. Freeze-dried vegetables are nice to have on hand in case you decide at the spur of the moment to make a meal that needs an ingredient that you don't have on hand fresh. I also added some canned carrots and the liquid they were canned into the stock. I canned a lot of carrots a couple of years ago and it turns out we don't like canned carrots so I've been adding them to soups and have freeze-dried a lot of them. Rounding out the ingredients that are going into the stock are a few bay leaves and some minced garlic. Between the chicken stock and the chili, this house smells amazing. We let the stock simmer for about 24 hours, then strained it and cooled it in the refrigerator overnight. This way the fat comes to the top and solidifies so I can skim it off the top. Look how much gelatin is in that beautiful stock. Then it goes back onto the burner to bring it to a simmer so it will be ready to pressure can. Meat stocks are a low acid food and they must be pressure canned and they need to be hot packed. Hot packed means the food, the jars and the water in the pressure canner must be very warm. I've run the jars through the dishwasher to not only get them clean but to get them hot and ready to fill with this delicious liquid. After processing the jars at 11 pounds of pressure for 20 minutes, I have 23 beautiful jars of chicken stock I will be using for soups, stews, and other dishes. Thank you for stopping by the Old Mayfield Place today. Stay prepared one step at a time and have a blessed week.